Hi everybody, in this video we are going to generate some rhythmic variations with eighth note subdivisions. Uh, we are going to be using some traditional musical notation as our inspiration here. So what we mean by eighth note subdivisions, if we were to take a beat and divide that into two parts, which would be a downbeat and an upbeat. Um, so if you were to count like one and two and three and four and to the beat, that would be an eighth note subdivision. Now I have made some visuals here just to kind of show what we're talking about. So the idea here is that if we take two beats and break them down into eighth notes, we would have four parts. That would be one and and then two and. Now, what I have here are all the possible rhythmic variations that we could have over those two beats if we were to break it down into eighth notes as the smallest possible subdivision. So, for example, here is a half note. So this note, the duration, which is how long the note would last, would be two full beats. Here we have two quarter notes, which would be uh, one sound on each beat on the one and the two. Here we now have two eighth notes, so this would be one and two. Here we have the reverse of that, so the quarter note happens on one, and then the eighth notes happen on two and, so one, two and. Here we have all eighth notes, so one and, two and. Here we get into some syncopation with an eighth note, then a quarter note, then an eighth note. So this eighth note would last for the first half of the first beat, then this quarter note would last for the second half of that first beat into the first half of the second beat and then another eighth note. Here we have a dotted quarter note which would last a beat and a half and then the remainder would be the one quarter note there, I'm sorry, one eighth note there and then we start with the eighth note and then have a dotted quarter note to last for the remainder. So any rhythm that can be subdivided into eighth notes can be made by these eight what we'll call rhythm cells all right so these are all the possible permutations of rhythms that we can get in two beats using these eighth notes and if you start looking at musical notation and kind of break it down in two beat cells you will see that every possible rhythm is just some kind of permutation of these Eight rhythms here. So what we're going to do is kind of turn these rhythms into code and then we are going to use them as a template to kind of generate some rhythms and some different variation in our rhythms. Now in Sonic Pi we don't really operate going linearly over time with our rhythms. So when we are entering in sleep values, which is sort of what time is represented in, in Sonic Pi, um, we aren't giving like on beat one and then on beat two and then on beat three. We're more thinking about it in terms of duration, like how long is this note going to last or how much time is going to pass before the next sound happens. And then once that sound happens, we kind of start at zero again and then we give a new duration for how that should last. So I've broken that down. Here are those same rhythms now uh, using the durations that will then enter into Sonic Pi. So this half note would get two full beats. This would be two quarter notes. Uh, so we'd have one and one. Here we would have 0 0.5 and 0 0.5 and then one. Here one and 0 0.5, 0 0.5 and so on. So this would be all 0.5, 0 0.5, then 1 to 0 0.5. The dotted quarter note would be 1.5 followed by 0 0.5. So if we add all these up, these would all equal 2, which is the two beats that we are talking about. So uh, let's go back to Sonic Pi here. Um, so the first thing we're going to do is we are going to create uh, a two-dimensional array. Now I have another video in which I get into using two-dimensional arrays as a way to create some uh, drum beats using arrays, uh, which you can check out to find out a little bit more about that. But the idea with a two-dimensional array, and I'm going to call this array cells. So I use my square brackets here to create the array, but now inside of this I'm just going to have a bunch of single arrays. So each rhythm cell is going to be an array. 
Now, the first one we had was 2, then we had 1 and 1, and then we had uh, 1, and then 0 0.5, and then 0 0.5. So I'm just taking each one of those rhythm cells that we looked at and creating an array that uses the durations for each one. Um, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5. And then we had uh, 0.5, and then 1, and then 0 0.5. The dotted quarter note to eighth note, and then finally we had the eighth note to the dotted quarter note. All right, so I have this array called cells, and inside this array are other arrays. Okay, so now what I want to do is I'm going to iterate through uh, this two dimensional array to play each one of these. Now, each time I iterate through, it's going to give me a different uh, array here. So in some cases, I will have to iterate through the arrays within the array here. And that is going to be slightly difficult uh, because each array in this cells array is a different length. So in sometimes I may need to only iterate through one value in the array, but in, say, this case, I would have to iterate through four values in the array. So each time it goes through, it's going to be a different number in terms of how long the array is that we need to get through. All right. So um, in order to do that, I'm first going to create a live loop. I'll just call this rhythms. I spelled that wrong, but that's fine. OK. So for example, if I wanted to iterate through this array here, I would maybe do 4 dot times do, and then end here. Okay, so I'm going to sample, I'm going to use um, this snap percussion sound for the sake of this. And really, where this is all coming into play is where I would sleep. So the sleeps are really what these values represent because time is sort of represented through the use of the sleep value here. Um, so in this case, I am going to sleep for, so I would put cells here, okay? And then I would have to first identify a value of uh, the index of the array. So this would be index 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. So I'm going to just kind of iterate through cell 4 here. And then I would do dot tick. So this is going to tick through this specific array. So this is cells, and then it is number 4. So let's hear what we have. I'm also going to, just for the sake of time here, use a BPM of maybe 100. All right, so there you heard it. Maybe I'll just take out this live loop for a second so we can just hear it go through once. So that was iterating through this, okay? But if I want to iterate through, say, this one, okay, and I were to change this to, let's just say this one since it'll be right before that. So instead of four, I'm going to iterate through three. So this would be zero, one, two, Three. That's the one now I want to iterate through. But if it's still at four times due, so that gave me one and two like that. But then it came around and did this one again. Why? Because it is four dot times due, and there's only three values in this array. So once it went through the first, and then the second, and then the third, it came back around and did the first again. But I don't want that to happen. I want it to iterate through however many are in the array at any given time. Okay, so the way I can do that is instead of dot times, I can four dot times do. I'm going to do cells, and then in this parentheses, I would do whatever number it is, and then I'm going to do dot length. Okay, so this is a way that I can iterate through any value in the array. Uh, and it will always do it the number of times uh, that there are values in the array, which is what this dot length is going to do for me here. 
Um, so what I'm going to do now is to make this kind of work randomly, uh, since we are looking to generate some rhythms here, is I'm going to make a something called n, which is going to just be a, sort of a number that's going to hold a random value for the length of these cells. So I'm going to do uh, cells dot length. And actually, um, before I do that, what I want to do is I want to generate a random integer. So rand i. And I want to generate any of number uh, which is the number of arrays in this. So I'm going to have 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So cells.length is what I'm going to do here. And that way I know I will get a number between 0 and 7 for this. So every time through this loop, uh, n is going to be a number between 0 and 7. And so that will give me a random array from my two-dimensional array here. And then I can just put n here and n here. So, and we can even, I'll put n in the console over here so we can just kind of keep an eye on which number is coming up. So now, let's say n is 4. So this will give me array number 4 in my two-dimensional array. And then this will be for that array. So this will be 4 times. And then it will go through tick through that array. And then the next time, if this is, say, array uh, 1, the array it would be this one. Now n will equal 2. And so it'll go through that. So let's run it and see what happens. All right, so just to kind of backtrack here, we see, so at this point it was number four, so we heard this one, and before that it was number seven, so we heard this one, and then before that it was number three, so we heard this one. Remembering the index always so starts at zero, so this would be zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And so I can just kind of now generate these random uh, rhythms here, but they are rhythms that are again, consistent with these sorts of rhythmic notations that we would see uh, in more traditionally uh, written Western music, certainly. Um, but these are all the different permutations of eighth note rhythms that we would run into. And so now we can just kind of generate a endless stream of those rhythms uh, based on what we put here in our array. Now just one more thing I could add. Right now I'm just using a sample, but let's say instead I wanted to add some melody to that. So maybe I'll do a scale. Uh, I'll do like D4. I'll make a major scale here. And I'm going to randomly choose. So one more thing now that I want to do, since the notes are always going to be um, of a different duration. In this case, it would be two beats. But in this case, you know, it's going to be one beat and then half a beat and then half a beat. So I'm going to add a release here, which is also going to be exactly the same as whatever the value is. So I'm going to do cells n dot tick. And now what I need to do with my sleep is I need to make this dot look so that when uh, tick is called, it if this is tick at 0, and look will then also be at 0, as opposed to if I kept this as tick, then this would be tick 0, but then this would call tick again. It would be 1, and then this would be 2, and I'd wind up skipping over a bunch of stuff here. So that is um, an important thing to know when you're working with multiple ticks within a loop, uh, is that you want to use dot look if you already have a dot tick. So let's see how this comes out. So there you have it. I guess one more thing I could just do just to kind of drive that point home is um, I'll just add maybe like a 
kick drum here. Uh, and I think what I'll do is actually bump this up and I'll, I'm just gonna have a sample kick drum here just to keep a steady beat. And then I'll sync this up just so you can really hear the subdivisions uh, of the eighth notes going against kind of like this metronome that we'll have in the kick drum here. So here we go. I'm getting the same uh, sort of run every time just based on the way that things are randomized Sonic Pi so if I wanted to change that I could just use the use random seed uh, I could do maybe random seed 555 and that'll give me So there you have it. So this is just a good way that you can add some sort of generated random rhythm to something that you're doing, but it gives it a bit more of kind of a, a consistency to it uh, and a bit more rhythmically interesting than if I were to say just create an array uh, that had different duration values in it, like 1, 0 0.5, and 2. So this would be a bit more consistent and a bit more rhythmically interesting since we are basing them off of these uh, rhythm cells and permutations. So that is it uh, in terms of adding that rhythmic variation using these eighth note subdivisions. Um, so soon I'll be doing a video also on how we can add a bit more uh, variation to this through rests and also ties or into between some of these rhythm cells. So keep an eye out for that.